Hello there guys, what is going on? Sonny Chelsea back here again for another episode of Added Time, answering your questions that you kindly submitted. Let's get into it straight away here. Firstly, with Chris O'Flynn asking, are you concerned for Callum Hudson-Odoi's future at Chelsea? Um, I'm not overly concerned. I think you have to take into consideration Hudson-Odoi's fitness problems this year. I don't think you can underestimate that. I think I think that's been a big problem for Hudson-Odoi. You know, he, he didn't have a full pre-season for Chelsea. He came back in September and then I I believe he got injured around Christmas time or just after that and really only came back to fitness uh, recently. Um, so I think you need to give him some patience for that. He still is a very young player and I've seen this a lot with, you know, just thinking about young players and looking at maybe players who have developed into really good players, um, English players as well you know, sort of completely rubbishing players early on, I think is a dangerous move. And I think that Hudson and doing next season is big for him because I feel that Willian likely won't be at the club. Um, so that frees up space for Callum Hudson and doing potentially to get more minutes. He's got to prove himself. He's got to prove himself to Frank Lampard. Um, he's got to do better. His consistency of performance has to improve, but he still is a very young player. The club have put a lot of faith in him with that massive contract. And I think even in glimpses this year, you've seen how big of a player he could be for Chelsea. That's on the mentality of the player to be better, more consistent, to fight his way into the first team because it's going to be difficult with Hakim Ziyech coming in and all the players competing for minutes at Chelsea next season. I wouldn't be too concerned. I still think he's got a long way to go. I think he's going to get opportunities next season and let's hope he takes them if he can get back to full fitness as well. BX asks, if Kante is not sold, if Chelsea sign Havertz, who starts between Kovacic and Mount? That is a very interesting question. Um, I think in some ways, when you look at the midfield, the way it's sort of shaped up, um, Mason Mount, you know, has that versatility as we saw against Man United yesterday to play a little bit further forward as an inverted winger. He has that ability and flexibility to do that, which I think gives Mount a better chance of staying in the team long term. I have to say Mason Mount, I think, would start ahead of Kovacic. I think he'd stay in the team. I just think Mount is so integral to what Chelsea do. I spoke about this in my rational perspective yesterday, where I think when Mount plays Chelsea play, I think the natural energy Mason Mount gives to Chelsea, I think when he's not there, you very much notice it. There's a drop off. Kovacic has been brilliant for Chelsea this season. You know, by no means am I rubbishing Kovacic. If you watch this channel consistently, I'm always singing his praises. I think he's a really good player. At times, he's been Chelsea's best player this season, probably most consistent performer. I think what he offers to Chelsea, I don't think can be underestimated and I don't think you should rubbish it just because he may not score the most amount of goals. I think what he offers in the modern game is very crucial. Getting through, you know, a press, being able to drive over the ball. I think maybe his final pass could be a bit better and could improve. But at the same time, I think he's done wonders with Chelsea. He's looked a very different player than he did under Mauricio Sarri. Um, so I still think he'll get a lot of minutes next season as well. I think Chelsea are going to be playing a lot of games. So there is that opportunity for rotation. And with Havertz, remember, he he can play in a variety of positions. He can also play right wing. He could potentially play up front as well. So maybe there could be times where Kovacic could fit in there as well. But it gives Frank Lampard greater strength in depth, doesn't it? Bagavalf asks, do you think we are going to miss Willian next season? This guy is part of everything we create. He doesn't look like a 31-year-old. I feel he deserves a three-year contract. Um, I've been conflicted about Willian, but I, I have to disagree with you. I, I think he... Three years, I think it's just a little bit too much, I have to be honest. Um, I feel like this is a very natural end point for Willian. I think it's a nice way to go out if he wins the FA Cup and that is his final day as a Chelsea player and potentially has a big impact on that day. What a way to go out. And even if he doesn't win the FA Cup the last time, I still think he's had a brilliant Chelsea career. I just think there is a sense now with Chelsea looking to rebuild, with Pedro leaving as well. I just think it's time for him to move on. I think Chelsea need to look in a new direction. Hakim Ziyech coming in, new faces, a new look to Chelsea. And I think Frank Lampard really wants to imprint his vision on Chelsea moving forward. And I just think that Willian has helped massively. Don't, you know, Chelsea have relied on Willian this season. And Willian, as you rightly point out, has been brilliant mostly for Chelsea this season. He has been one of the best players. I don't think people can uh, rubbish that. I think even if you're, you know, you're not Willian's biggest fan, I think he has been one of the most consistent performers. And I think Frank Lampard has very much leaned on his experience this year. And I do think we will miss his influence in the dressing room. He had that winning experience, that experience of winning titles under Jose Mourinho and Antonio Conte consistently for Chelsea. His work rate, I think, is almost second to none at points. And I think that um, has really helped uh, Lampard this season, getting through maybe some sticky periods. And I think, especially since the restart, him and Christian Pulisic creatively-wise have looked really good. Um, so yeah, it, it's about replacing that. But Chelsea needs to be bold, be brave, look in a new direction. And I just think three years is just a little bit too much for a player of his age, in my opinion. Kwame No asked, how how do you rate our chances against Arsenal? And based on the games this season, what do you see our formation being? 
Um, I think we're going to find out a lot about Frank in terms of the 3-4-3 the three, three where he sticks with it compared to uh, you know Man United where he does it again against Liverpool, where he does it again against Wolves like it worked so successfully against Wolves um, in September. Against Arsenal, if you remember, in that away game in uh, December, he started with a 3-4-3 three, three and then reverted to a 4-3-3 three, three when it wasn't working. I still wonder whether Chelsea, Frank talks so much about flexibility tactically wise, does it work as well against Arsenal, um, a team that liked to pass the ball around? You know, they were very defensively solid against Man City, but I just wonder whether that will be in the back of Frank's mind. Um, I think it's going to be a very interesting game because Arteta has clearly improved Arsenal, and I think it's going to be a, a good tactical battle between Frank and Arteta um, to see how both managers approach that game, um, to see how, you know, what these games recently have done to maybe influence the manager's thinking and uh, Pulisic I think is a, a player for me especially if Chelsea are going to stick with this 3-4-3 Pulisic isn't a player that naturally fits into that system for Frank so far he doesn't play Pulisic when he's played a 3-4-3 he may change that this week because I think you need to fit Christian Pulisic into that game somehow some way because he has been Chelsea's best player since the resumption of football um, but I think Chelsea should be going into this game confident I mean especially if we end the season on a high get Champions League football potentially win on Wednesday against Liverpool it gives Frank that game against Wolves basically is a bit of a dead rubber to be honest where you can maybe rotate the team freshen up things uh, for the game uh, to rest players for, of course for the Arsenal final um, but I don't think we should write off Arsenal I think it's very dangerous to go into it and think it's going to be the same as a year ago um, Arteta I think has done a lot of positive things for Arsenal and they're on a good run um, Chelsea of course I think on their day can beat anyone at the moment when they play like they did yesterday they can beat anyone but it's just about that consistency of performance that's been the problem for Chelsea um, so I think it will be interesting I, I'm not, I can't commit to 3-4-3 three, three at the moment I have to see what Frank does in the remaining two Premier League games before giving you a clear answer on that. Brendan Coyle asks, do you think Giroud is going to be part of Frank's plans next season with Werner coming in and Tammy still here or are we going to sell him? I don't think we're going to sell Giroud. I think it would be foolish to sell Giroud. Think about it in the world of you know football. Is there a better target man of doing what Giroud does um, than him? I don't think there are many better players. What a signing he has turned out to be for Chelsea Football Club. And I think with that contract extension that Chelsea have given um, to him and the impact he's had for crucial moments for Chelsea in the run-in to this season, why would you sell a player like that? Yes, I still believe that Timo Werner uh, will likely be maybe the main striker next season. But to have that option off the bench, to have that flexibility and you can adapt things. And if you need to be a bit more physical in a game, um, you can bring Giroud on and he and he has that link up play as well. You know, remember Werner can play off the left, you know, potentially Werner off the left linking up with Giroud. If Frank wants to play a three at the back, he could play two up front, Werner and um, Werner and of course Giroud, maybe Giroud and Tammy like he has at points this season. Um, I just think what Giroud has done for Chelsea this season, I think would be stupid to let him go. I think what he does for Chelsea, I think he's underrated and I think what he's done has been incredible. So no, I think Giroud absolutely has earned the right to be part of Frank's plans next season. Jefferson asks, do you think Zuma showed enough today to go into the new season as Chelsea first choice centre back I'll keep supporting because I love the work thank you mate um, yes absolutely I, I've said this I said this before of course yesterday is a brilliant performance I did think that Zuma has been Chelsea's best defender this season best centre back this season um, in what has been a difficult season for, for Chelsea's defenders pretty much um, considering the chopping and changing the amount of goals we've conceded um, I was a bit concerned hearing reports of Chelsea trying to sell Zuma this summer I really hope we don't um, if I think, you know, the three at the back, if, if Frank wants to stick with three at the back, he's going to, of course, need more defenders. I just think out of the current defenders, I'd be more inclined to sell an Andreas Christensen and I would cut Zuma. I just think Zuma offers you more. I think he's more suited to the Premier League, physicality-wise, pace-wise, but also I think Zuma's passing goes under the radar as well. I think he's got that technique to really pass out from the back, which maybe because of his physical element of the game and being better aerially than maybe our other defenders, I think people underestimate that as well. Keanu asks, was this match proof enough of Reese over Wan-Bissaka. Um, wan is a brilliant player. He really is. You know, right back, he's really improved Man United this year. I think Chelsea were very good yesterday and Frank definitely set the team up to really isolate and really go after the wide uh, defenders of uh, the fullbacks or the wingbacks as it started off against Man United yesterday. I mean, both Brandon Williams and wan had difficult times yesterday and that was down to the work of Marcus Alonso and Rhys James. Rhys James, um, his best performance since the restart. That's that Reese James performance yesterday was more like the majority of his performances this season. He has had a little bit of a dip recently, had some doubt was naturally, but I think once again, you saw how big he could be for Chelsea in the future, especially going forward. I think having Dave um, behind
behind him, I said this in my retro review, gave uh, Reese the freedom to go forward and express himself a bit more. And really dangerous. I saw some stats about his game um, that were really impressive as well. And just his performance all round was brilliant. And really, you know, that was generally for Chelsea players yesterday. They all had brilliant performances. But I think Reese, a really encouraging day for him, hopefully gives him lots of confidence now moving forward. Um, and I think shows you how good he can be. I think, you know, comparing players, and I think, you know, Wan Bissaka, I think is still a positive player for Man United. I don't want to sort of go off and say, you know, this is it for Wan Bissaka. I think people are too reactionary on that. But just, I want to focus on how good Reese James can be for Chelsea moving forward. And I think that's a real positive yesterday after such a dominant performance by Chelsea and personally him because I think he was so good on the Wembley pitch. So that is it for this episode of the Time. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you did enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Son of Chelsea and I'll see you again.